Yeah, good afternoon, uh, members of the media. Um, yeah, we expect a very difficult game against five, chi five times uh, Champions League champions, and um, we our last encounter in uh, Congo was not so good from a result perspective. But I think if we play the way we played in Congo, we should be we should be all right. We created a lot of chances. Uh, if, if my memory serves me well, I think we had uh, something like 16 shots a goal, nine on target. Uh, we had probably the highest XG uh, that we've had in the group stages. Uh, and also, I mean, we dominated the game. We had something like close to 600 passes, 62% uh, ball position. Uh, and we still lost the game. But I think if we play the same way and we play with the same intensity, we should be all right for a, for a good result on, uh, on the weekend. Thank you very much, Coach. Uh, Divide just from your end, uh, from the players' perspective, final group match, uh, your thoughts ahead of the match, please. Um, good afternoon. I think the boys are ready for the game. So we give our own, our A game. It's um, the training we got there to have a tour and the court is leaving our school for things in training. So I think the boys they are ready. They're gonna put in eight here. We want to finish strong in our group so that we can finish on top of the group. Thank you, Divine. Colleagues, it's the opportunity to ask questions. Uh, your name and publication, please. Coach Mazola from SABC Sport. Uh, maybe just from, uh, from your point of view, the venue change, just an explanation there, and if it's you know, if it's going to affect anything, if it changes anything at all. Uh, yeah. Yeah. No, no. No. Nothing. Nothing from from a technical perspective. I don't think. I don't think we expect much. Um, fortunately, we used it uh, earlier in the season as our home ground, so we're quite familiar with the with the turf. We will train there tomorrow, just to get a little bit more uh, familiarity around it. And that's football, you know, football you've got to be prepared to play everywhere, anywhere, and uh, play to the best every single time, and that's, that's, that's what I expect. I expect a good game of football, it's a good pitch. Uh, there was a lot of investment done by the club uh, to make sure that the pitch was ready and, and, and has a surface that is uh, good enough to host the Mamelodi Sundowns game. The last time we played there was a few months ago, not so long ago, against Super Sport and we got a good result there. So we got good feelings about uh, Lucas and um, we're very familiar with, uh, with the pitch, the atmosphere that can also be created there. And and yeah, that, that is it, you know, it's it's we just have to perform and perform whether we play uh, Loftus or Lucas, we've just got to perform and that's the mentality going into this game. From um, sure, no the question is to you, Coach. It's been almost 10 years since you last faced this team for the first time in 2015. And it was a really defining moment for the club. You know, they won the Champions League. They yeah. said that Sundown was their biggest test. Um, can you take us through in terms of the journey that Sundown has been since that game in 2015 and where they are? And what's been key in terms of this consistency in the Champions League now in the group stage and the sixth season in a row? Yeah. Sure. Yes. I, I, I wish I was I was there for the entire period. I remember I left um, maybe a season after that. Um, so I missed I missed a couple of the the steps in the ten year journey. But for the last six years we've been in the quarterfinals. Uh, last season we were in the semifinals for the very first time in uh, in something like four or five occasions. And we want to we want to be that team that's always there. You know, we have to try to be there all the time. It's not good enough to think that you can win a, a continental trophy without a, a big stamp on the on on the continent. And that stamp means that you've got to be in the quarterfinals every year. You've got to be in the semifinals. And this is what Al Ahly are doing. This is what Vida are doing. They are there every single season. They are in the quarterfinals. They are in the semifinals. And to to take a place that we feel we rightfully deserve to be amongst 
not just the best teams on the continent, but maybe even the best, some of the best teams in the world. We've got to make sure that we are in, in that space uh, for, for the continental competitions. We're in the semi-finals, we're in the finals, we're, we are competing for that, uh, for that space. And this is, this is the mentality we want to have so that eventually we can uh, break the monopoly of the North African sides in, in terms of dominating continental competitions, particularly from a club perspective. But we know how difficult that is because you, you're not only fighting against very good teams who, who know the space of Champions League, but you're also fighting principalities, you know, you're fighting football heritage. And uh, that's that's the space we want to be in, and that's the space we are fighting very hard to to try to to, to be part of, you know. And and as, as long as we keep doing that and have that ambition, eventually we will win the Champions League because um, you've got to be in a position to be able to compete for for the Champions League, and that's and that's and that's part of our 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 plan for for the medium to long term and. And uh, it's something that excites me greatly. Uh, the question is for both. Because with the design, um, obviously, you had a step away from the club, came back, had a lot of time in the training pitch with the coach and the teammates to eat the great. Um, you obviously play now in the Champions League. Has it raised your game? Um, do you feel that it's a higher level than the PSL? Um, do you feel the improvement in your game playing at that level? And then for coaches, well, it's a similar question. Is the Champions League a significant level above the PSL? Because you guys have consistently played at that level, at continental level, which if it is a higher level, explains your results at the domestic scene. Okay. Yeah, it's a big one. It's a big one for me. I played before in 2016 and then now I'm in another standout. It's good for me. I'm gaining a lot of uh, confidence because I'm able to be as a son. They keep on pushing me. Yeah, and then I think that I'm gonna to, to try to put my A game each and every game for the team, for the club, and for the players and for the coaches. Yeah, Lorenzo, it's a, it's a difficult question to answer because I mean I would I would presume I would presume that if uh, you were to pose the same question to to Carlo Ancelotti at Real Madrid or maybe even to Pep or Klopp or wherever some of the big teams on the on the European space, they would say to you that of course winning the Champions League is 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 uh, is, is important. Um, is the standard higher? I, I don't know really because there are games where I feel that we are tested more in the domestic competitions from a from a tactical perspective. And then there are games where I think we are stretched a little bit more. I think I think Mazembe is a case in point. I think in, in Lubumbashi we we struggled a little bit with dominating the pitch. Whether that was because of the the climate or, or the synthetic pitch, I am not so sure. Whether it was the physicality and uh, but 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 even though we had a lot of the ball and even though we had a lot of chances. Uh, I don't think we dominated the pitch well enough, you know. And and um, the space of Champions League it has to be a space for sure that is higher. Although I still also believe that the competition really, really starts in the quarterfinals. The Champions League competition is when you have the the eight best teams going into the quarterfinals. I think that's when really the Champions League starts. But the the, the DSTV Premiership is a very very good competition. I mean, we 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 sometimes it's it's like this this expression that I use with the players. You know, sometimes when you when you you come into your house, you see you see these sofas that you see every single day that you devalue them because they are right there in your eyes, and then eventually you put your 
You take it on top, you start to you put the plate of food on top of these sofas. Up until you see them, you sell them and you see them in someone else's house. And then you're like, oh, these things are actually very beautiful. And that's the same with the DSTV commission. It's, it's, um, a lot of work has gone into, into making it one of the best leagues in the world. Uh, the stats show, and even the, the number of players that went to represent the, the DSTV commission in the FCON was significantly above the rest of the other countries and domestic competitions or leagues. And, and then of course you've got to play 30 games and 30 games means you are really the best of the best because you play home and away and you play each and every single opponent. So so from that perspective, I I, I, I wouldn't say that the one is better than the other because, because I don't think that you are in the Champions League without winning the league title or doing well in the domestic competition. And that is to finish first or second. And then and that makes it more important for sure because it's 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 a means to qualify, and then of course then it's, uh, it's the Champions League is is the Champions League because it's got it's got all the champions, and then that makes it also a little bit difficult. But um, I think the I think the absolute no, the DSTV Premiership is a, is a strong competition and one that for sure is a very important competition for us as a football club, just just as equally important as the Champions League. Coach, looking at Brian Onyango, he yeah. has not really played much football, I mean 20 games in the yeah. last two seasons, a lot of substitute appearances. Yeah. Now considering his physical profile, is this the kind of competition where you need someone like him? I mean, it Brian all the time. Brian, uh, Brian is a yeah. Brian is a special breed, very special. For for Brian to be playing football still, to even have played those twenty games, he's defying he's defying logic. I mean, uh, when he had a, a very very serious injury to his knee, I mean, from a from a physiological perspective, he should have stopped playing football. And so for the mere fact that Brian is still at 20 games or has 20 games for Sunnams and he trains the way he trains, he has the attitude he has, he's an unbelievable human being, uh, very special. Um, uh, his leadership in the, in, the, in, the, in the change room is so important. We're also very fortunate that we've got so many captains in our team, you know. We've got uh, Devine who's been a captain before, Ronwen who's a captain for Bafana, Brian who's a national team captain for Kenya, Peter who's a national team captain, and Toby Bala was a uh, captain at uh, Highlands Park. I can go on and on and on. So fortunately for, for us as the technical team, we've got, a, we've got a very strong team, a very good group of human beings and, and a special group. And it's a, it's a, it's a group that I, I honestly think that I'm extremely privileged to have and I wake up every day with the desire to, to learn from them too. I learn a lot, I ask, I speak, I talk, I pose a lot of questions, I listen. And they teach me a lot of things. They, 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 they make me think about how to adapt and, and, and to improve the team and how we play. And um, for sure, I think, um, like Brian, we've got far too many special people who have, who have defied odds and, and have continued to, to grow and improve. And uh, I think as, as a football club, we are very, 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 very lucky to have some of the characters and the personalities that we have not. Congratulations on the 40th match record. Thank you, sir. Uh, coach, I'm, I'm, I'm just tempted to ask about this. You've sometimes has tried to win the Champions League quite a few times. I remember we've got you even much closer in the last edition. Mm. Uh, what would it take to for you to actually take it even a step higher and make the final and win it, looking at the personnel that you have now and uh, with the injuries, the long-term injuries coming to him, I mean, the Rehuma who is there, uh, they, they've come out, they've you know, recovered, Zuma is playing beautiful football. All the players that you've had problems or challenges with, injuries and stuff like that, are coming back. Sometimes it's looking good. What do it take for you to win it? And if I may add just one for, for Lunga, what systems do you use if you want to run, look on a sign a player 
a long event to Islam or to another player? Is it something that you do mentally to prepare the player, or you just say, go and we'll call you when we need you? Yeah. Um, it's, uh, it's different cases. I mean, it's, the, there's, this, there's different scenarios. Divines is different to a prom promise of Kuma, for an example. Um, so there are players that uh, to, do, to, to, to complete their developmental phase and get ready for high performance, they've got to go to a team that's maybe, yeah, a, a team that's got less pressure. Uh, and that's a more polite way of putting it, you know. Uh, less prestige, less pressure. But also, if you look at how a player like Nkulisi, for an example, he went to Black Leopards. And Black Leopards, uh, a former PSL team in the Popo, conditions not so good. And he has to fight and help them to survive relegation. That, that already is, even from a, from a technical, tactical perspective, extremely stretchy. And then, of course, from a pressure perspective, to, to the pressure may be different to the pressure at Sundowns, because the pressure at Sundowns is to win every single game. And maybe in, in some of the other clubs, you you can accept maybe drawing or maybe even losing some of the games against the bigger teams, uh, especially away from home. But this is this is this is part of the journey, you know. And 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 some of the players complete their developmental pathway or their their cycle in in in, in a space where they are already ready for first team football and they can produce the results at a club like Sundowns and some. You have to send out a loan to get, to get some experience and, and some exposure and maybe even to be stretched a little bit, you know. Um, and uh, so it's, it's, it's not really a cut and paste type of scenario, you know. It's, 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 it's tailored to, to the needs of the individual. And also the constraints, constraints from, a, from, a, from a legal and a, a documentation type of perspective, and I think you understand what I mean uh, with with regards to Dubai. So his story is completely different. Uh, what will it take for us to win the Champions League? Is going to take a lot of consistency, a lot of hard work, and also a lot of luck. I think this competition to 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 win it, you need a lot of luck. Uh, you only have to go to last season for an example, where with one game to go, I actually are already out of the competition. Look at the FCON. So, in these type of competitions that are high level, maybe there's not so much of a, of a big difference between the teams. You need a little bit of luck, and I think, I think if you look at uh, Ivory Coast's uh, story with regards to how they won FCON, already out, uh, coach out, and and then oh, after the last game in the group stages, these people qualify, and then they. They all go on and then they ride the crest of that wave and, and they go all the way with that momentum and, and, and they lift the trophy. Same with Al Ahli. And, and, and maybe you could even speak a little bit about it with our, our um, AFL uh, victory and how we. Because, because you go to, to, to Egypt, uh, in the first half you, you get a penalty against you, you've got your 10 men, and it's, it's completely difficult. But, but you, you, you need to be brave, you need to show a lot of courage. And you also need to be there, you know, you have to be there. You've got to be in the quarterfinals, you've got to be in the semifinals, you've got to be in the finals. And and, and and when you are there, then you can you can you can dream of going further. You can you you you, you can you can feel the need to, to outstretch your wings and try to, to to soar slightly higher than you have and, and as daunting a, a task as it may seem and sound. Is, uh, is something that we believe is 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 is, is possible. It's something that is within is within reach. But you've got to go one game at a time, and you've got to go one stage of the competition at a time, and try your level best to to, to perform right there and then, and then and then hopefully the football gods smile upon you and uh, support you. But uh, exactly that, we've got to be there. We've got to be in the quarterfinals. We've got to be in the semifinals. And we've got to try to to be in the finals repeatedly and, and hopefully one day God smiles upon us and uh, rewards our hard work and, and due diligence. Thank you, Coach. Could I have the mic to Mr. Budibai? Thank you, Coach. Uh, Thank you, Mr. Budibai. Thank you, Mr. Budibai. Thank you, Mr. Budibai.
I also like this movie. <laughs> okay, um, to divine, uh, at what point do you guys start thinking about going the whole season unbeaten? I mean, the 16 games in from, from Sundown's point. I mean, I listen to Tiko on the Pitch Side podcast. He says, although you guys will do the rhetoric of one game at a time, but after 15 games, you surely start talking about it and start thinking about it. And uh, to the coach, I'd say the first only shot was winning the AFL. And I remember after losing to Tiki Mazembe, you accused by the media that side that you felt disrespected. They said you lost the game on purpose. But would you say, um, you know you guys are playing for top sport against Mazembe, would you say beating them now would send a strong message uh, to all the other big hitters in the competition to say, look out for us in the knockout phase? Yeah, I think... Um, I think if you still have to send a message, then there's something wrong. Really, really, I think if people uh, uh, think, I, I always say it. I mean, it's the same thing. It's the same thing I get asked sometimes about Peter and Shanuli. Uh, are you worried about? No, I'm not worried because Peter has proven that he will score, and and Peter will score. I have no doubt about it. Sundowns have proven that they are one of the best teams on the continent, and we will win the Champions League. Eventually, we will win the Champions League. What we have to do is we have to make sure that our performances are good enough, we are consistent, and we work every single day hard to put ourselves in that position. That's that's what we can concentrate on and we can control. The rest is uh, is up to God Almighty, you know. But God tries to. It's, uh, it's a biblical principle, you know. Men plan and and do everything that they can to 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 reach a certain. But it's God who decides. And that's a biblical principle. So you've got to always, you've got to always live in hope and faith, uh, which is a, an extremely important part of of, of of being highly spiritual or, or in that space from a religious perspective. But that's that's where we are. You've got to work hard, put yourself in a position to to receive. And when uh, when God says yes, hopefully you are you are ready and you can you can you can receive the blessings. The worst thing in life is, is, is to be presented with an opportunity and not be prepared. That's the worst thing in life. Uh, the, the feeling of regret haunts you for forever and ever because um, you don't always get these opportunities. And so we've got to be in a position where we, we are ready for, for, for the blessings that can be bestowed upon us as a, as a, as a reflection of our hard work and, and, and the amount of uh, hours we put into this job, and I think um, this this group is a special group and is special enough, and maybe even talented enough to be able to to do something uh, in this in this season's competition. Uh, I think that's what as they are like. It's unknown. We have to like to win each and every game. The effort that we put in the field, each and every training. I think that's where the day is uh, coming from because we, we have that to, to win to win each and every game. The focus is to win each and every game. It doesn't matter whether it's a small team or a big team, but we want to put it in so that we can win because we always train, we train to win. No one, no one like, like to lose. Every team wants to, to win, but that's what Sunday wants to win every, every game that we play. Whether it's a friendly match or a big game or a cup game, we have to. Um, Divine, uh, Sia Sana here from the Sunday World. Um, you've introduced yourself, you've reintroduced yourself at Mamiludi Sundowns, and, and one would say you are a completely new signing. Um, how, how delighted are you with your, with your recent um, performances and that you're now getting minutes? And that you, you've always wanted, and then how important will it be for you to, to make sure that you, you maintain the standard and, and cement yourself, um, or yeah, yourself in, in the team? And, and to the coach, um, just to add on, um, I have two questions. I Okay. Um, for me, like, I'm happy to be here. And to be like healthy. I mean, I mean, the good thing that I can say, the people that they are surrounded me in this team, everyone who take the manager, the players, everyone was kind to me. 
uh, we've reached another benchmark and a target of ours, which was to, to obtain 10 points. We now have 10 points, and the second benchmark is to see whether we can finish first, and, 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 and that's a huge uh, probability uh, with Saturday's game. And then, and then we have to then start thinking about um, the next couple of games, which are going to be very difficult for us, both in the, in the, in the domestic league and in the domestic cup with, uh, with uh, another, another game that is waiting for us. So, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's tough, but it's, <laughs> that's the, you know, the wind blows hardest on the top of the tree and we, we dared to, to dream and we dared to, to start climbing and now we've got to deal with the, not just the, the benefits of looking down on everybody, but also the pressure that comes with it. And, um, but, but we are getting there. Slowly, slowly we are getting there and that's the most important thing. Vincent from SAPC News. Short of Vince. Coach, what kind of uh, approach do you think uh, Marcelino will employ on, on, on the weekend? If you look at the fact that you know, uh, they seem to do well at home, I mean, the big teams like 5 1, mm -hmm. and in the second leg, you know, the, the Champions League, in the second leg, will draw or will lose. If we, even when they meet Sports Material, they the Confed Cup, they won't have to be at home, but you know, they came here uh, away from home. What kind of approach do you think they're opposed to? Do you think they'll roll out or they'll kind of like sit back and play for the draw? It's, it's difficult to say and to preempt, and I'll tell you why. Because when you when you analyze the games, when they've got a bit of pressure away from home, they they have got the profile, and and they've got they've got centre backs. Mukonko, for an example, is is a beast around the box. He gives nothing away. Fatih, the goalkeeper, a great shot stopper, uh, great reflexes. Their team, the Konza in the midfield, Oladapo. Um, they're a team that is very comfortable to sit behind the ball. Uh, very, very low block away from home. Very comfortable low block away from home. That looks for the long ball and maybe even the second phase to be able to, to, to spring a, a powerful counter attack where Ntimba and uh, Keita can join on, on transitions with the fullbacks. Very aggressive. And then they put the balls into the box. Or, or maybe even diagonals where they release Fofana, they release uh, Fire, they, uh, they, they've got a, a trauma even, the physicality, the speed, and um, the profile of that team. But by this game, they've got nothing to lose. They come into the game, they've qualified, and so maybe they try different things and, and they explore. And that's what we have to deal with. I don't think that there is a certain way that they will come with it. I think there's a little bit of less pressure on them because in the AFL they didn't do so well. Uh, they were knocked out already in the, in the quarterfinals in the first round. And so qualifying for, for the knockouts for the uh, Champions League is probably a big, big, big uh, achievement for them already. And, 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 and I think for them, whether they finish first or second, I don't think it's uh, is um, is a is a very very important thing because I think the most important target for them was to to get out of the group and they've done that. So whether they'll they'll come at us, I haven't seen them with that personality except in their home games in the domestic competition. I mean, the last I don't know is it the last three four games uh, there was eight nil six one five one. In the games that I watched in the domestic competition, they they are scoring goals for five. So. Uh, we know how difficult it can be for, for us against this team. Uh, a very good side, uh, with some very, very good players, and uh, we, have to, we have to be ready to, to, to compete and to, to get ourselves into a better position than what we currently are at. Let's go to take the last question. Okay. <laughs> You spoke about one of the things that you want to achieve is obviously break the monopoly of the North Africa. And part of that would obviously mean spending as, as much as they did in terms of acquiring their talent. So how do you reconcile that what Sundown spend um, in terms of domestic eyes? It's viewed as, as quite a lot. Uh, but when you look at the space that you're competing in and the budgets that the likes of Guida, Pyramids, and even Ali have, uh, you guys are probably among the poorest. So how do you sort of look at that 
you have to spend to be at that level, but on the domestic front, you are seen as doing something that is upsetting the modern and comes out with quite quite a lot of criticism. Um, and this is the truth, man. I'm really honest. I don't know how much you are saying. No, seriously, so I can't answer that question because really, really, I, I don't know. I don't know how much we pay for, for transfers. I don't know how much people are earning on the contracts. It's, it's, it's a part of it's a part of the football club that doesn't sit on my table. And um, and I, I'm fortunate that I own only black person in there. We just fetch a player when we see him, we fetch him, we fetch him. So, uh, uh, unfortunately, I'm not, I'm not in a position to answer that question. Because I don't know. I really, really don't know. I don't know the budget. And I'll actually, I don't know the budget. And I don't know Sun budget either. Okay, FIFA report. Thank you. FIFA report. Yes. That's official. You can speak to the facts. But theoretically. Theoretically. Oh, no, then. Uh, so we'll get Fleming back to <laughs> No, it falls under his portfolio position. Shoes. Should we? Should thank you very much. Thank you guys. Thank you so much. Travel safe. Thank you. Thanks to